Tim Burton's Batman, starring Michael Keaton, Jack Nicholson, and Kim Basinger. A family of tourists is robbed in a back alley in Gotham. Shortly after, a vigilante dressed as a big bat approaches the thieves who stole the husband's wallet and confronts them. Knox's interest in her increases. At first, he is only passingly attracted to her. Knox plans to attend a charity event at millionaire Bruce Wayne's estate where Commissioner Gordon will be present knowing that Gordon has a file on this vigilante. Harvey Dent's insistence, believing that the new district attorney could learn about their relationship to the Axis Chemicals plant, has enraged mob boss Carl Grissom. Jack Napier, one of Carl's men, casually recommends that they break in and steal the documents that would implicate them. This concept appeals to Carl, who suggests Jack as the best candidate. Knox tries to talk to Gordon at the charity event but is unsuccessful since the commissioner denies that there is a Batman out on the streets. Vicky meets up with Bruce Wayne, who comes across as quite reserved. When his butler Alfred asks him to go, Bruce eventually walks out. As Bruce watches the party's camera footage in a covert command center, Gordon is overheard discussing a tip that Jack Napier is visiting Axis Chemicals to clean it out with a colleague. The documents Napier's men were looking for are not in the plant safe when they arrive at Axis Chemicals. Jack warns his soldiers to be careful since he thinks it might be a setup. They are ambushed shortly after by Eckhart and his men. Following the firing, Gordon appears and orders that Jack Napier be taken alive. In retaliation for betraying him, Jack kills Eckhart during the pursuit. Napier is eventually cornered by Batman, who manages to grasp him moments before he plunges into a chemical vat, but Jack is also submerged. In actuality, Napier has made it through the ordeal and is making his way to a sketchy physician to have his face fixed. His skin has been permanently bleached white, and the chemicals he was exposed to have rendered his hair green. He also has a permanent smile on his face. Jack then goes back to Grissom's apartment after coming to the conclusion that Carl set him up to die and that he had Eckhart call the police. Jack kills Grissom after revealing his recently transformed appearance and claiming to be the Joker. Vicky and Bruce spend a pretty quiet evening together in Wayne Manor in the meantime. Vicky discovers that despite her interest in Bruce, the enormous manor does not appear to say anything about him. The Joker, who is now operating in the criminal underworld, claims to be in charge of Grissom's business because Grissom has gone on vacation for a bit. Vicky, who has developed an interest in Bruce, Vicky observes him from a distance as he enters an alley and places two roses on the ground. Vinny Recorso, one of the criminal lords, eventually makes an effort to go public, telling reporters at a news conference that Grissom has given him and his friends, excluding the Joker, control of Grissom's business. The Joker suddenly makes an appearance, stabs the criminal boss in the throat, and then drives off. The Axis Chemicals factory is another thing the Joker is interested in. The Joker synthesizes a Smilex by mixing several hazardous substances. When combined with any typical household item, it makes someone pass out from laughter. Vicky Vale soon gets a call from Bruce Wayne asking her to meet him at the Gotham Museum of Art. When she arrives, she discovers a table already reserved and is given a present box with a gas mask inside. Sleeping gas starts to flood the museum in a matter of seconds. Vicky dons the mask only to watch the Joker enter, deface the artwork, and then take a seat at her table while wearing flesh tone cosmetics to hide his white complexion. Batman suddenly bursts through the skylight and escapes with Vale. The Batmobile is pursued by the Joker's thugs as they drive through Gotham. Batman and Vicky get out when traffic obstructs their path and flee on foot. Batman reveals that he has found the source of the Smilexa drug and gives Vicky the information to take to the press. However, before she can ask more questions, she blacks out and finds herself in her apartment, minus the film in her camera from the previous night. Vicky confronts Bruce when he visits her shortly after for lying to her about leaving town. When the Joker enters the room, Bruce begins to elaborate on who he is but is cut off. Bruce threatens the lunatic and the Joker responds by asking him a question, ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? Bruce finds this offensive but he hardly has time to respond before the Joker shoots him. He and his men leave while Vicky watches, but when she goes back to check on Bruce's body, she discovers that it is missing along with a silver serving platter that has been shot. After this trauma, Vicky goes back to the newspaper, where Knox shares the details he learned about the street where Bruce was. 
This is where Bruce's parents were shot and killed, according to the newspaper. The 200th anniversary banquet for Gotham is postponed while the mayor and his staff address the media. The Joker, who claims that Carl Grissom is dead and that he is in charge of the crime syndicate in the city, interrupts their broadcast, though. The Joker declares that a celebration will be held that night, stating that Batman will also arrive and handing out $20 million in cash to the crowd. Bruce, who has been watching the entire situation play out, recalls what the Joker had said. Bruce is certain that the Joker killed his parents because the person who shot them down the same night also said, dance with the devil. Vicky then shows up in the Batcave after Alfred allowed her entry. Bruce tries to confess his affections for her, but he is aware that there isn't much time left, considering what the Joker has in mind. In an effort to foil the Joker's plans, Batman initially dispatches the Batmobile to access chemicals. The Joker is not inside the structure when it is being destroyed. The Joker starts playing music and handing out free money as he makes his way down the streets of Gotham in a number of enormous balloons and floats. Soon after, Batman appears piloting his Batwing aircraft. The Joker notices this and, along with his men, dons gas masks before releasing Smilex gas from canisters attached to the balloons. Soon after, Batman flies in and steals the balloons, sparing most of the civilians. He then makes a second appearance and tries to catch the Joker. The Joker has different ideas and uses a ridiculously long pistol to take out the Batwing in one shot. A Batwing crash occurs. The Joker then approaches her and drags her to the top of a local cathedral. Soon after, Batman arrives just as the Gotham police enter and secure the building. However, the Joker uses an acid flower to force one of the cathedral's bells to fall and ruin the wooden stairway preventing them from climbing the stairs. Batman confronts the Joker at the top of the tower, accusing him of being responsible for the passing of his parents. But the Joker manages to toot him Batman and Vicky before Batman can finish off the clown, and soon the two are dangling from the top of the cathedral. The Joker tries to flee as soon as the Joker's chopper shows up shortly after. Batman, however, employs a grappling hook that tangles with the Joker's leg and a stone gargoyle. The Joker eventually collapses to his death due to the weight of the gargoyle. After the incident, the Joker's henchmen are taken into custody, and it seems that Gotham is now secure. In case they ever need to contact him, Batman has also sent a signal to the Gotham police. As Batman, Wayne is pondering the bat signal while still fighting evil on the rooftops of Gotham. So is Batman any good? Batman is brought to vivid life, despite a curious lack of backstory. While many initial entries of potential series define the origins of the character, Tim Burton's attempt at the live-action superhero assumes that the audience already knows something about the caped crusader. Beautifully macabre set designs help bring out Gotham City's appeal, along with the colorful array of illicit characters. Dark and foreboding, the locales house the likes of the Joker, adorned with brightly colored suits and creepily gaudy makeup, and his band of clown-like pantomimists, who tote machine guns and lay waste to crowds of civilians. The Joker's vivid makeup mirrors the artwork from the graphic novels, but utilizes scar tissue structuring that borders on nonsensical. Some of the gangsters' antics go a little too far in the humor department, particularly when the Joker has a henchman carry a jukebox so that he always has a theme music behind him. The intense tone Tim Burton set for his spooky production is obviously not helped by Prince's throbbing soundtrack, however the museum destruction montage may be considered suitably unsettling, the murderer dubs himself a homicidal artist. The majority of the movie is properly grim, as one would expect from the fearsome Batman, yet there are enough comical moments that the atmosphere is finally lightened by them. It's always exciting to see Batman use his many high-tech tools to foil opponents in decent action scenes, such as chases in the Batmobile and Batplane, which help to spice up the dull parts. Batman laid the foundation for one of the most popular series in movie history with an action-packed showdown in a soaring, rickety cathedral, compelling characters, imaginative art direction, for which it won an Academy Award, and the excellent Jack Nicholson. But all in all, Batman is certainly a worthy effort. Some top-notch acting, stunning visuals and a story that does just enough to draw you in and hold your attention throughout. To call this film great might be a stretch, but one could say it is very, very good. Certainly good enough to be worth your time. Batman is getting a 8.5 out of 10. What do you think about Batman? Leave comments below and share your thoughts.
That will do it for this review. If you like this review give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. So until the next review, have a great day.